Meanwhile, Ginger Hotels is revolutionizing the lean lux segment. ET Now's Avan Dabaj speaks with Puneet Chatwal, the MD and CEO of Indian Hotels, about cumin as well as ginger. Take a listen. Well, here I am right here in the Ginger Hotels in Goa and in conversation with me is the man of the moment, Mr. Puneet Chadwal, Managing Director and CEO of Indian Hotels Limited. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. What a lovely hotel and space this is. And let's begin by talking about cumin because I believe the culmination of that was the feedback got from guests during the pandemic where they were longing for the signature Taj dishes at uh, the tip of their fingers. Tell us a little bit more about how it actually began. Well, you're absolutely right, Avan, that uh, Cumin started as a home delivery business. Uh, and we created an app uh, together with Tata Digital uh, in, a, in a record period of uh, six to eight weeks right. time. Mm -hmm. And in the month of May, towards the end of May 2020, uh, we started this uh, in Mumbai and then extended it to almost 20 cities uh, during the pandemic. And thereafter, Cumin evolved into Cumin food trucks, thereafter into Cumin QSR. Yeah. And that quick service restaurant led uh, to the idea of each ginger properties, all day dining restaurant should be called Cumin. And uh, that's why we are here. And this is the very first conversion uh, by the end of this month, we would have 10 uh, cumin branded restaurants and 10 ginger properties. So what about the overall contribution to the revenue pie at large? How much is it of the total F&B revenues? How much would cumin contribute? So at the enterprise level, uh, the, the percentage would work out even smaller uh, than let's say 2%. Uh, but I think uh, given that more than 40% of our total consolidated revenue comes from, uh, uh, comes from food and beverage business. Uh, then I would say easily you can say today 2.5 to 3% of that revenue is coming from cumin. And I understand that it's not just... But growing exponentially, right? Uh, it was 0.2%, then to 0.5 and 1. So I hope... What's the target with over the next few years? 100 ginger properties, which is our target the plan. in operation, with 100 cumin units. The system wide revenue of cumin should definitely cross 5%. And a high margin business as well, right? You were talking about the overall margins that you enjoy for cumin. What, what is it See, currently? In we are typically in any of the food and beverage business, you would have a cost of rent or capital costs for the real estate. So we don't have that. You would have incremental expenses of hiring uh, people specifically doing that job mm -hmm. of cooking and packing. Uh, we don't have that. We have only a very small portion of it. And uh, also <clears throat> on the technology front, uh, we were uh, uh, very blessed to have had yeah. the support of Tata Digital yes. because of the pandemic. So I think normally if you were to add these costs back, the margin would be 10 to 15 yeah. percent but because these costs are not there we are able to do more than 50 percent EBITDA margin albeit at a very small yes. percentage which I told you today stands yeah. around two, two, two and a half percent. And you know speaking of uh, ginger you just showed me around it is really uh, you know the epitome of uh, being lean lux uh, you know, you've got that kids room, you've got a co-working area, you've got the rooms which uh, really do the job in terms of staying. Uh, I wanted to understand because you, you'll have been very optimistic about ginger and growing this in terms of what the inventory currently stands at and what you're looking to grow ginger at. See, ginger today, as I said, is 55 hotels in operation with a total portfolio of uh, uh, 85 hotels. So there are 30 under development. Mm -hmm. 
we are entering into a very exciting phase as of next month. Uh, we should open at least six more ginger uh, branded properties before the end of this financial year. So definitely we'll get to a number of 60 in operation. But as I mentioned on your channel before, the one which I'm eagerly waiting for is the flagship yeah. for the brand, which is the Ginger Santa Cruz. Uh, it will open in May, latest June of next year. It should have opened, but a lot of time we had to stop construction because of the pandemic. Right. And um, that is a 371 rooms. So that is equal to an average of four to five gingers because yeah. they're not like this kind of a the big scale. box ginger. Yeah. So, so I'm very eagerly waiting for that. Let's uh, maybe grab a cup of tea while we continue our uh, discussion. And I think a testament to what you're saying is uh, with the fact that we saw the airports crowded today when we reached, the fact that there were so many people at the reception as well at Ginger. And let's understand more about, uh, you know, in terms of the financials as well, you're talking about scaling up margins. And I also understand that revenue is looking to grow that to about a thousand crores over the next four to five years for Ginger. Is that on the cards? Well, I would not make any, uh, you know, concrete uh, guidance here on the channel. We'll do that in a capital market day. Yes. Um, but definitely Ginger is uh, one of our focus areas and uh, what we have given is guidance very close to your name under our strategy of Avan, Avan yes. 2025 <laughs> is that we'll have 125 uh, hotel portfolio and I think that's kind of reasonable because that means 40 more over the next four years and we are very confident of adding at least 10 to our portfolio each year um, and if each of the ginger properties uh, do an X amount of EBITDA mm -hmm. per hotel, then it's just a multiplication and then you add to that the big box ginger. Yeah. And the number should be very clear, but we are very optimistic that this can become a significant and a very big business for us. Even on consolidated level, you could easily, you know, when we spoke about cumin, we talked about certain percentages, yeah. which are small because at the end of the day, it's just one all day dining restaurant. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that too in, in a hotel and not uh, freestanding. Uh, although we have freestanding, 11 of those we took over from Tata Consumer in the city of uh, Bangalore. Um, when we talk about ginger, you could easily say that ginger plus the new businesses, ginger, homestay and home delivery and QSR of cumin should get us anything between 25 to 30 percent of our revenue in three to five years from now. I'm sure even in terms of, we, we spoke a little bit about revenues, etc. But what about uh, Ginger's margins and, you know, any sort of numbers that you'd like to, in just in terms well, of the guidance, what you're yeah, yeah, the guidance. guidance that we've given is that all new businesses that we do have to come at a margin which is north of 35 percent. Uh, otherwise, we will not enter into those businesses because um, we have an outstanding portfolio which people can only be envious about but it costs a lot to maintain that iconic positioning yeah. and that iconic positioning especially with the Taj helps you become for two years the world's strongest hotel brand or for three years among the top brand across all sectors in India so whether it's banking, finance, insurance, whatever. So. Given those kind of investments, when we reimagined our brandscape, uh, we kept a few um, strategic thoughts in our mind. One of those was to address customer needs at all ends of the market, a little bit like, uh, like Tata Motors. And the second thing was that we should add businesses which are margin enhancing and not that they are draining and eating into your margins. And the third was, let's add businesses which are driven more digitally mm -hmm. so that we are not considered as that classic uh, capital intensive, labor intensive yeah. kind of a company, but that we have the best of the old and, and the new. Yeah. And, and I think that's, uh, that's a very good way forward. We'll end on a positive note then. And for Ginger, Lean Lux, what is the long term growth plan for growing the Ginger brand? Well, India having almost uh, 1.3 billion population, 
if we said that the segment was relevant for even 500 million people or 350 million people, it's anybody's guess. I can only say in the UK, for example, which is um, not even one fourth of the population base we talk about, uh, in this segment, there are five to six brands totaling 5,000 hotels. And um, if we are the largest in this space today, uh, then there is a lot that needs to be done and a lot will get done and uh, I do see uh, I do see what's happening in India but I also believe in the India story I think uh, India is going to do very well um, among the top five economies of the world and if India is going to do well people will do well when people will do well they'll have high disposable income and if they start getting high disposable income they'll spend more on dining out staying in hotels whether as a business need or as a, or as a leisure need and in that category when people are just beginning and you're not a mature market for hospitality i think brands like ginger will benefit and the classics will continue to still yes. lead the charge and the classics i mean the top end of, of course the of course all right, so cheers to that then, uh, Mr. Chatwal. And I'm um, looking at your lovely cumin menu. Maybe we can get ourselves a tawa pomfret. frit. What is it that you would like to order since we're here? Uh, as you are the guest, you decide what you want. Tawa pomfret frit caught my eye on that menu, right, so maybe. Then, then we'll follow with that. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, thank Mr. Chatwal. Thank you for having me.